Hello and welcome to the latest in our series of Aviation 2020 interviews. This week I'm happy to introduce our Chief Economist, Peter Morris, who will be discussing the implications of the UK Competitions Committee's decision to sell off three of its airports. So Peter, what's your take on yesterday's decision? Well, it wasn't unexpected and I think BAA was probably hoping that by having given up Gatwick they could have shaken the Competition Commission off their trail, but clearly they've pursued it all the way through and they've followed through with something pretty similar to the preliminary recommendation they gave earlier. What can we learn from this event? What are going to be the implications of it for the wider community? Well, I think it's going to make a complete mess of the process of investment in airports and particularly runway capacity in the London region because you've got a situation, first of all, with a tightening of fund availability anyway. Added to that, you're seeing downturns of 10 to 15 percent or so of traffic at both Gatwick and Stansted. So it's not a good time to sell an asset and it's not a good time to have a clear view about what the airport world in London is going to look like for the next 20 years. And in terms of the focus for airport investment going forward, will there be some ramifications? Well, I think it's interesting that BAA was, in a sense, the, the flagship of the whole idea of airport privatisation, of moving airports from the public sector across into the private sector. And certainly the initial indications was it was an untrammeled success. So what you saw was big returns, you saw investment, everybody got to like it. Everybody piled into airport privatisation and governments to a certain extent were delighted to be able to get something off their books and get something that they could then get back to pay for health and education and the other things that governments do well. This, to some extent, has almost come round full circle and suggesting, certainly from the findings of the Competition Commission, that the whole process, as it occurred in the UK, didn't take into account the public interest, and in particular the interests of the final customer. So I think it's interesting that something that did see a consolidated private entity has now seen a break-up of that. And do you think this is likely to occur in other parts of the world then, a similar selling off of um, airport assets under well, private ownership? Well, I think the, the process of privatisation is unstoppable for the reasons that governments are looking to cash in whatever they can, particularly as public sector debt rises and the problems in other areas of government increase. Airports are not something that governments by and large do well. So. The private sector has an enormous amount to bring in terms of efficiency of operation, in terms of planning, in terms of financial engineering. So I, I don't think this is necessarily a long-term change in the whole tenor of the business, but it certainly is a bit of a shock to the whole privatisation system. So it seemed that having been something that was going to be the salvation of airports, then to some extent has actually backtracked. And who are the likely um, players to come in and acquire these assets now? Well, I think if you look at Gatwick, you saw around five people that seemed to meet the original criteria to actually bid. And by the time it's actually come to the next stage, you're seeing only three of those likely to go forward. Possibly one of those could drop out. So if you're seeing another airport coming into the mix, it's going to be quite difficult to find players big enough and with deep enough pockets to actually compete for that. So I think, certainly from BAA's point of view, it's at just the wrong time. And one suspects that they may seek some form of legal challenge based on the way the markets are changing rather than contesting the underlying finding of the Competition Commission that it was against the public interest. And given yesterday's decision, appeal or no appeal, what's the likely time frame? When do you think the sales will actually be completed? Well, it, it takes anything up to a year to push something like this through, as we've seen with Gatwick. So I think given there has been this time scale of around two years talked about, and in addition there's talk now that the two years might be relaxed to a degree to reflect market conditions, you could see this running and running, but potentially that has a very significant impact on additional runway capacity in uh, the London area because Stansted was held up as the place where additional runway capacity is going to be provided 
now it looks like that that horizon that was 2016 could be moving back to 2017-18, possibly 2020. So then you have a situation of both Gatwick and Stansted unlikely to get any additional runway capacity that is urgently needed despite the recent downturn before 2020. Thanks very much Peter and um, we'll be following this topic very closely in our upcoming webcast on April the 23rd. Thanks very much. Thank you.